What's going on guys? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to another transfer daily video for you guys today. Hope you guys have had a good weekend. It's been a bit of a slow weekend for content, but there hasn't really been a lot of transfer news. We knew the big news that we were waiting for for ages was the Kai Havertz transfer news. And the Kai Havertz news has happened now. And there's been a bit of a break period now for us. There's also a week left of the Premier League season, so you can understand that focus is now also switched towards that as well. But there's also another month left of the transfer window and Chelsea are not finishing the transfer window. We do know that. We know that Frank Lampard is also focusing on trying to get a goalkeeper and get a defensive midfielder before the window closes on the 4th of October. So in this video, we're going to be talking about Deadwood. We're going to be talking about a couple of Chelsea players that we really should have already got out the front door and what Chelsea players Frank Lampard will be looking to try and sell before he tries to get some more defensive reinforcements or he tries to get a goalkeeper as well well because our transfer window is not over we still need a goalkeeper if we are serious about going for a league title this season and we could also do with a natural dm as well we know the spending spree isn't over we know with all the transfer money that we had saved from last year we have the chance to still make profit on our net spend depending on the players that we sell as well so in this video we're going to be talking about a couple of players that frank lampard will be looking to try and move on before we can get some more reinforcements in first player we're going to talk about is ross barkley now ross barkley signed in in 2018 for a 15 million pound fee and it was a low risk high reward sort of fee it wasn't anything too deep even in the case of now I don't really feel too bad about the transfer. We made a lot of very bad decisions in the 17-18 season. Ross Barkley wasn't necessarily one of those awful decisions. It was 15 million. We'll still make profit on that regardless whether Ross Barkley stays or goes. With our negotiation skills, I could see him going for more money than we bought him for. But same way Ross Barkley didn't really do much when he was at Chelsea. 17-18 season, he barely broke into the first team. 18-19 he had his opportunities but he just wasn't good enough and you really know Maurizio Sarri he preferred the Jorginho Kante and Kovacic midfield and you know his rotation as well he was never really going to switch from it so Barkley was mostly coming off as a sub for, for Mateo Kovacic didn't really have a lot of opportunities had a couple decent set, set pieces but corners weren't really great for him either and bar the equaliser goal against Manchester United I don't really think he had much else to do that was noteworthy that season Frank Lampard last season, he gave him he gave him game time. He gave him a lot of opportunities, but he didn't just show it. He didn't prove himself. Um, he always seemed like the sort of player who mentally could be one of the top players in the side, but he can never translate what he wants to do in his head to his feet, and he always seems to struggle. And he seems like the type of player to me that needs to be the best player in the team and needs a team to flow through him. And if a team doesn't flow through him, he seems to struggle. I will give Barkley credit. He had a great spell before we all went into lockdown in March. He had a great spell against Everton, Spurs and Liverpool as well. But as soon as we came out from lockdown, we just didn't see a lot of Ross Barkley struggle to recapture that form as well. And Ross Barkley to me, to me looks to be another one of those players that needs to leave. He's on 100k a week wages as well. So we do want to clear that off the wage packet. I'm not sure what clubs are initially interested in him right now. I know we were trying to put him in some sort of deal for Declan Rice if there was potential for that. We're going to have to wait and see with that because it's all about West Ham's resolve and who they can sell first. But Ross Barkley is a player that we really should be trying to get off the wage barrier. He hasn't really impressed much at Chelsea. I don't think he's going to impress any more than he already has. I think it's just best for Ross Barkley to find another club and for us to try and get him off the wage bill. Second player we're going to talk about is Davide Zappacosta. Zappacosta, another 17-18 transfer. He signed for 23 million on deadline day. And he started on fire. He had an amazing goal against Carabao that had half of the fans at Stamford Bridge thinking we just signed the Italian Cafu. But never recaptured that form since. Antonio Conte initially I don't think wanted him either. I think he wanted Alex Oxley chamberlain and he wanted to convert him into a right wing back as well. But Chamberlain wanted to play in centre mid so he picked Liverpool over Chelsea. Zappa Costa had barely any game time in 17-18 either. He had his opportunities but they were mostly cup games or throwaway matches. Conte didn't prefer him to Victor Moses which says a lot about the player Zappa Costa is in my opinion and it made sense as well. Like, I remember going to games and I didn't like Victor Moses at right wing back that season either, but I preferred him a lot more than Davide Zappacosta was. Zappacosta just seemed slow. Crossing seemed a bit overrated in my opinion. Defensively, he wasn't that good as well. 
18 19 came around and he had less opportunities. He had a great goal line clearance against Frankfurt in the Europa League semi final second leg. Give him credit for that at least, but that's literally his only noteworthy thing that he did that entire season. And he's been loaned out the entirety of this season. Zappacost is another player that we need to get off the wage bill. Slightly lower wages at 70k a week, but you still want to do that and it all adds up if you're talking about the amount of players that I am going to be talking about in this video. There is a lot of Deadwood that we do want to get rid of, and when you combine all of the wages and the fees that we could get for them that is another key player that we could bring into the side so it's about getting rid of all those players that you just know are not in the club's long-term plans and Zappa Costa is one of those names Torino's interested in him I know Atlanta's interested in him as well I think Atlanta's looking like the more likely option for him but whatever club hat takes him please we, we need to get him off the wage packet because he isn't going to play for us he's our third choice right back right now it feels the same thing with Tarek Lamptey when Tarek Lamptey he left for the exact same reasons because he wasn't getting over as Equator and he wasn't getting over Reese James either. So yeah, Zappa Costa needs to go. Third player we're going to be talking about, Timu Bakayoko. Yet another 17-18 transfer signing. We talk about the amount of mistakes that we made in this window. Bakayoko was signed for £40 million and at that point was our second highest transfer of all time. Also, if you look at the list of our highest ever transfers, if you take out Kai Havertz and Timo Warner, it looks like an absolute joke. But Bakayoko joined... He had initial good perform um, good performances away to Spurs and away to Atletico Madrid. They had Chelsea fans gassed and they created a new chant for him. I'm going to play it now. <laughs> But he did. He really did. And I think as soon as we played that tune at Stamford Bridge, I remember hearing the whole of the Matthew Arding and blaring that out against Manchester City. And he had a poor performance in that game and we lost 1-0. And it was just a continuous downward spiral from him. He looked like a complete shell of the player that he was at Monaco. Continued to lose the ball away. I'm just going to say that just because that's in my head now because of the chance. But he continuously lost the ball away. He couldn't deal with a press. His passing accuracy was a complete joke. Under pressure, he was poor. His first touch was poor. His ball control was poor. It was the sore play. It was literally that bad. I was sitting there thinking that 22 years old, I could still make it as a professional. And this isn't even me trying to cuss out Bakayoko just for the sake that I'm on camera. He wasn't good enough for us by a long shot. And I remember the game against Watford where he got sent off in 30 minutes, where, which was the single worst performance that I've ever seen in the Chelsea shirt. And ever since then, Bakayoko has looked like it's finished for him. He went back on loan to Monaco for another season. He's gone back on loan to AC Milan for another season. He looks to be going back on loan to AC Milan for another season. He's on over 100k a week wages, just over, so he's similar to the same wages that Thiago Silva's on. And we need to get him off the wage bill. We've needed to get him off for a while now. He's got two years left on his contract as well. We don't look like we're going to get profit on him. We're probably going to make a loss, but if it's not too much of a loss, I don't think it's a bad deal for us. But yeah, Bakayoko has to go. He's not going to make it at Chelsea. I don't even think he wants to wear a Chelsea shirt anymore just for the memories of 17-18. It's just better to cut our losses for the sake of both parties. Next player that we're going to be talking about is Antonio Rudiger slash Andreas Christensen. This is going to be one or two. All depends on the transfers that we make. I know we're still interested in Declan Rice and if we can get Declan Rice in, I wouldn't mind us getting rid of both of them. But if not, I would still think it would be good for us to get rid of one. Now, we're going to talk about both of them. I've discussed this before, but we're going to talk about why both of them wouldn't be a bad decision to get rid of. But one of them still makes sense to do. Antonio Rudiger's on 100k a week. Andreas Christensen is on 80k a week. So they're both still earning decent wages at the club. And both of them have struggled to impress while they've been at Chelsea. I think Rudiger's been the more disappointing one out of the two because he's been the more paid one, the most experienced one. And he's also been the most injured and the most disappointing for us this season. So if you put a gun to my head, I'm saying sell Rudiger over Christensen. I don't think his experience really makes much difference because it didn't really do much for us last season. It won't do much for us now. And I don't think he's going to get any better. But both of them, I think, if they stay, are on their last chance saloons. I think 
Andreas Christensen really needs to start making a name for himself. You can't call him Chelsea youth anymore. He's what, 23, 24 years old. He's now a developed player and he needs to start putting in those consistent performances that he's been struggling to do since the 17-18 season. Now, 17-18 Christensen, before that Barcelona match, genuinely one of the most consistent and one of the most composed defenders in the league. He was excellent. But as soon as he made that mistake for Lionel Messi to score in the first leg, it's been a completely different Christensen ever since and he's never looked like he's recaptured that form since um antonio rudiger always seemed to be a little bit rash but i think now that we've been without leaders it's been more exposed i think it was also exposed last season antonio rudiger's performances went really under radar just because of how bad the defensive system was and how bad the other defenders were as well it was as Pilaqueta's worst season in a chelsea shirt david luiz wasn't really banging in anything either and marcus alonso was just being shocking at left back so you can't blame rudiger too much with the same breath, you could say you can't blame him too much for this season, but he's meant to be the experienced centre-back. And he's clearly shown that he isn't going to be the one that's single-handedly going to change this defence. So I don't think it's going to be worth keeping Antonio Rudiger unless it's a case of Thiago Silva's next to him and literally just controls everything he does. Because in my opinion, Antonio Rudiger is just too rash. We've seen it so many times where he just goes flying into tackles without thinking of it. Off the top of my head, the FA Cup final, the second goal. That second goal doesn't happen if Antonio Rudiger doesn't run out 30 yards to try to intercept Bellerin and just get, gets megged and bypassed. Andreas Christensen as well. Never really looked like holding down a place. He started He started most of the games at the start of the season for us, but then fell out of favour with the manager, so he dropped down the pecking order. Pulled out a decent partnership with Rudiger before lockdown, but since then, Rudiger and Christensen have both looked shocking. And again, if you put a gun to my head, I'll say I'd rather sell Rudiger than Christensen, but if we bring in Declan Rice, I see no reason why we don't just sell off both, in my opinion. But yeah, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Final player that we're going to be talking about today and it's Emerson. Emerson signed on an 18 million contract in the 17-18 season. Yes, another 17-18 transfer. We're getting the pattern. I get it. We signed him for 75k a week and he has just struggled to hold down the first team position since joining the club. 17-18, I get it, it was January, it was going to be hard for him to stamp down a first team place, especially when we were playing five at the back and Marcus Alonso's there. So he was comfortably our second choice left back. But he started getting more game time towards 18-19. It was mainly Alonso starting as our left back, but we know about Marcus Alonso at left back and that season he was considerably shocking every week to a point where... Emerson was just our first choice left back by default and Emerson's performances in my opinion weren't even all that He weren't really the answer for us at left back either He was just a better answer than Marcus Alonso was at the time. So he started all the games instead He had a brilliant start to last season I will say that his first month he was amazing, but as soon as he got an injury it was just back to the old Emerson when he came back from injury. He would look devoid of confidence. Going forward, he wasn't that smart. His IQ wasn't looking that great either. I remember, this is one moment I remember specifically, we were 2-1 up against Arsenal in January. They'd been time-wasting the entire game because they were down to 10 men. As soon as we pulled it back to 2-1, Tammy Abraham dropped on the ground injured. And Emerson, under no pressure, could have passed the ball out, but instead booted the ball out 70 yards towards Tammy Abraham. And Arsenal equalised the counter-attack. He hasn't had a good continued end to the season. Coming back from lockdown, he's had barely any game time since. And with Emerson, it's looked like the writing's been on the wall for him, especially with the signing of Ben Chilwell. He's now our third choice left back. He's had barely any game time. And I think Lampard prefers Marcus Alonso towards Emerson. Hell, Lampard could be thinking the same thing I'm thinking, where if we get another left back, I wouldn't mind us getting rid of both of them. Because if we can get two versatile left backs, we can get rid of two left backs that have clear problems in their game. But... Marcus Alonso over, em over Emerson in my opinion and Marcus Alonso can still f come up with goals every now and then so I would prefer to keep him over Emerson but same way I still wouldn't mind us selling them both but Emerson does need to go. Inter Milan was interested in him but we had a 25 million valuation on him so they went for Alexander Kolarov from, from Roma instead. I'm not sure who else is going to be in for Emerson, but I do know we do need to get rid of him because it doesn't make sense keeping on the wage barrier. We've got loan, we've got loan players and youth players that can play left back as well. If we really need a third string left back, we don't need one on 75k a week. That's barely impressed in a Chelsea shirt. But yeah, guys, these are the Deadwood players that I think Frank Lampard needs to sell. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Let me know if you agree or disagree with any of the names I've listed or anything that I've said. 
Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G. Take care, and I'll see you guys very, very soon. Up the Charles.